good. And um, one second, you've got to admit more people. <laughs> All right, so this should be a nice session because there's a few of us here. So just to clarify, my name's Sue. Um, I've got a company called uh, the LinkedIn Success Academy. Today's session is about, it, it's really geared, I suppose, for, um, for people who are looking for that next job that next level role and um, it, it's where you kind of you find that your CV, <laughs> your resume as the Americans would say is, is kind of getting stuck you know in HR okay and it, and it doesn't move to the, the right people that need to see it. So I've got an agenda <laughs> but also what I like to do is I like to um, make this as much about you so feel free to ask questions. So I don't know if you've seen some of the videos I've done in the past um, and what we do is we, we basically um, you know ask questions okay I, I you know if you've got a question as I'm going through feel free. So the first thing that I want to talk about is if you are looking for that next level role, and I know things are very tricky out there at the moment with uh, Corona, and maybe you're just sick to death of hearing about it. Um, but the reality is, in my opinion, until there's a vaccine, we're just going to need to manage this new way of working. Yeah, I don't believe that social distancing is going to change until there's a vaccine. I think it's all going to kind of carry on the same. Um, maybe we need to be protecting ourselves. And I definitely believe in that. So not being able to or limiting yourself or exposing yourself to dangers is not always a good thing. I'm just letting somebody in. But my computer will not let me in. Let me admit this person. Right. So... Um, I don't think it's going to change, in my opinion, until there's a vaccine, you know, but what, what are your opinions? What, what, what do you think? Maybe I'll, I'll target Rob or, you know, what do you feel that this situation, because the economy's got to, in some sense, it's got to start again, but please don't think that I'm saying that it should cost lives. I'm not saying that, but I think that the way that we work will ultimately change. Yeah. So it might be more home working. But things will need to just what I'm trying to say is it's going to be the new normal, whatever that new normal is going to be. And I think that we've got an opportunity at this moment to kind of assess, OK, um, how do I, you know, what have I got as, as, as things that I can use to actually help me get hired? Yeah. So to me, the, the key essentials is the CV or the resume and the LinkedIn profile. They're kind of like the, the foundations of building, you know, a house. You know, to me now, those two things are equal and they need to be done the best that they can be. Yeah. And so if you have, I knew that my, my, you know, my husband does not have any more time available. He's one of those people that seems to be working even longer hours now that what's happened has happened. Um, but if you do find that you've got time, this could be a good opportunity to reassess where you are and what you want to do next. But safety is the most important thing. I'm not saying, please do not think that I'm saying that, you know, you should be going back to work, particularly people that have got health issues. You know, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I'm still scared to actually, uh, if I'm honest, I still don't even like going to the supermarket. And I'm in Germany at the moment. And we're coming out of lockdown. So, so you know, and, and I feel that, you know, Germany has handled the situation pretty well. I am from the UK. Do I feel the UK has handled it pretty well? Nope, I don't. Okay. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. But what I want you to start thinking about is you may have this opportunity. And I think that you're going to have to start thinking differently in terms of, okay, there's going to be a high number of people that are unemployed. You're going to be competing with a lot of people and some people are just going to go well that's the situation as it is but there's going to be people like yourself that are forward thinking that recognize okay there could be potentially an opportunity here and what i'm going to help you to do today is how you can stop your cv going into the black hole and ultimately kind of 
get past, you know, uh, maybe potential gatekeepers that are stopping you, you know, potentially getting hired, which is, um, which could be HR, unless you're trying to be a HR consultant and then you need to be directing it there, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna say to you is actually most people don't recognize that the CV is not very good. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be really honest with you. Most people don't recognize what they think that they've got isn't actually that good. And I'm gonna give you some ways that you can evaluate whether your CV is actually fit for purpose. So a CV that's fit for purpose should really get you to a coffee stage or it should get you to an interview, okay? It should be ultimately doing one of those two things. If you find that you've sent out your CV or your resume you know, maybe so many times and you're not getting any anywhere with this, then the first thing I'm going to say to you is that you might need to be looking at professional help. Okay? You might need to look at professional help in rewriting that CV. And yes, you can use me, and I am biased, but you can also use other people as well. Yeah, you can definitely use other, you know, other CV writers. That's the first thing, because most people overlook that. You need to evaluate, is my CV fit for purpose? So a good sign, if it's not working, is you just seem to be hitting this kind of, um, this brick wall in some senses, and, it, and you've been sending it out time and time again. So if you are looking to get professional help, these are the things that I want you to think about and it's a good way to evaluate if your CV is actually fit for purpose. So I think one I've clearly said, if you're not getting your results, you need to relook at it. But number two is that most people make the mistake of writing a CV, which is all about you. <laughs> and you think really, that shouldn't that be the case? Yeah, I bet most people think that a CV is all about them, what I've done. And it sounds obvious, yeah? And you're thinking, well, yeah, that's what I've always done. I've wrote about what I am because it's my CV. This is where I've worked. But actually, it's not about you. That's the weird thing. So the way that I come across it is that it's, you know, the way that you want to be looking at it is a completely and utterly different way and a different approach that you should be taking on board. And that approach is that you should be looking at the company and the position that you're going for and trying to work out what are the problems that company has and how you are ultimately the solution to the problems that they've got. So that makes it not about you anymore. It makes it about them. And that's the biggest mistake that I see people making time and time again, yeah? Does anybody recognize what I'm saying or does anybody disagree with this? Or what are your thoughts? I mean, feel free, you know, to speak. It is interactive. If anybody is brave. I think, um, Debbie Cobb, I think you're spot on really. I mean, it's about tailoring the CV, I guess, for each individual role that you're doing. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I think, it I, think, I think it's really about taking the time to do that as well because, um, you know, as we all know, it can be quite time consuming. You know, yeah. Yeah, you're totally right. And so what people do, the mistake that they make is they just go, okay, I'm just going to send that CV off, this generic CV to every single role. And that's what most people do. And I totally understand why you do this because you've just hit the nail on the head. It's too time consuming. Mm. So if I was creating your CV or your resume, what I do for you is I recognize this. And I actually say to people, there is actually no such thing as the perfect CV or resume. I'm very honest, there isn't. Because I'm sure that you've, uh, that you've experienced this. You, you do your CV, you send it off to a couple of friends and everybody's got a different opinion. <laughs> and you're literally left going, what the hell? Now, somebody is, I'm gonna, Okay, I'm just gonna read some of this. In my world, remote has been the assumed default of being on site very common. 
the future will have fewer exceptions, yeah, and then so is this change modified resume. Will HR understand the value or isn't it based on keywords? I disagree. I disagree that it's it's on keywords. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that. I'm not gonna be kind of the, the politician in the room that doesn't answer the question, but I will answer that question shortly. But I think that you you nailed it on the on the head when you said time. Time is the issue. So when I create a CV for people, I'm very honest and I say, actually, there's no such thing as a perfect CV, but I'm going to get it as close to as humanly possible to the job that you're going for. And then what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to say to you, okay, I'm going to show you that you need to adapt this. But by the way, this is not going to take you a day or half a day. It's just going to take you 20 minutes. And if you can do this, yeah, then the reality is, is that you are going to get more yeses than no's because 99.9% .9 of people will not do this. Okay, they just don't. <laughs> they just don't. Yeah, and we're talking high level people. We're talking people like yourself that are in high level roles, director level, and yet they're still making those common mistakes. So I recognize what you've said. And, and what I also do is I actually give you, okay, you know, let me give you an example of what I mean is that one job description might say, hey, you need to focus more on B. And another one might say you want to focus on X more, whatever the X is and whatever the B is, yeah? So what we try and do as well is we create some kind of like this content base where you can, where you can just basically copy and paste and bang it in. So these, this thing starts happening very quickly. Now the reality is most, most people don't do this, yeah? The reality is most CV writers don't do this because it takes too much time. The reality is that most CV writers will send you a questionnaire. <laughs> they don't actually even speak to you, yeah? And then they somehow manage meant to figure out what it is that you are, the solutions to their problems that you're able to do and they don't do this. Basically what they do, and by the way, this is a great way to evaluate if your CV is good or bad, is look at the summary profile for me. And the summary profile is normally just plain garbage. It's normally just talking about, I'm this great person, but instead of actually um, using factual information, it's very much adjective based. Like, I'm a great team player. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> so when you are evaluating, you know, a CV writer, you need to be asking the questions, Ooh. you know, does that CV writer actually have a conversation with me? Ooh. Yeah? Um, does that CV writer really understand, you know, the problems that I ultimately solve in that company? Because let me be very clear to you, you only get hired because there's a problem. If there's no problem, you do not get hired, full stop. Yeah, and that goes for voluntary organizations as well. So, so this is the way that you need to be thinking about it. And this is Jill. Jill, hello, is this Jill from? It is, hello. Hello from Germany. I'm so sorry, but I used to work with Jill back in the day. We're gonna definitely have a chat later. <laughs> so I was just talking about um, CV writing and what I've just been talking about very quickly to summarize is that if you, if you wanna learn how to get your CV noticed and stop it going into um, the black hole, then the things that you need to be really thinking about is, you know, is my CV good? Does it actually work? That's the first step. And most people miss this step out. They think what they've got is good enough. And I'm, what I'm asking you to do is ultimately go back to basics and be very honest with yourself and say to yourself, does my CV, my resume, does it, does it really answer the questions that the company is, 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 is wanting you to do so so again very clearly you only get hired because there's a problem and ultimately your cv needs to show the problems you solve and that's the that's the biggest advice that i can give you the second thing that you need to be thinking about 
is if you've got a track record of sending something out and you are not getting anywhere, most people will say to themselves, it's because of my age. Yeah, they will, they will, they will look at it and go, um, and I was speaking to um, somebody in San Francisco actually uh, yesterday evening, and he said to me, actually, I think it's an age thing. And I said, actually, before you go down that road, you need to evaluate your CV because by the way, they don't know you. The only way they can evaluate you is based on what you provide them. The only way that somebody, so this is really important to understand, what you're sending out is that that's the piece of paper they're looking at is the only thing that they can do to evaluate, is this person good or bad? Will they be able to do the job? And that's ultimately why I say to people, you really need to be thinking about making sure that you get professional advice, particularly for high level roles, okay? Because those high level roles, you know, that salary doesn't come along. You know, if you're going for a job that's worth 60 or 100K, those roles do not come around every day. So you need to be making sure that that CV, that resume is ultimately fit for purpose. Okay, so that's step one. <laughs> There's plenty of steps. <laughs> so step two is you then need to be kind of saying to yourself, okay, let's imagine that you feel that your CV is actually decent. You think, actually, I've got a decent CV. I think it does the job. It's got me hired in the past. I think it, it's a decent CV. Then what I'm going to suggest to you now is that you look at having two CVs. And this is going to answer the person that talked about keywords. I'm sorry, I can't see it. It's somebody called, I think, M. Daniel. So the CV, which I'm going to suggest, because ultimately what I've said about the, the, the title of this, um, this session is, you know, how to stop your CV going to a black hole. Okay. So step one is to evaluate if it's any good. But then I'm also teaching you how to miss out HR, right? So, so that's all, there's, two, there's a two-prong prong attack here. So if you feel that your CV is actually decent, then the other suggestion I'm going to be making is that you look at making that CV a creative CV. And I know some of you might be going, what is she on about? One second when I try and dig this up. So I had, ah, oh, so I thought I had it up. Oh, it looks like I didn't. Right. Ah, there it is. Okay, so something like this, the Creative CV template is really useful, okay? But it, I'm gonna be very honest with you, it's only useful if you are sending it direct to the hiring manager. Because if you send this to, for example, um, a recruiter, or you upload it to a job site, they, they are gonna be looking for those keywords, <laughs> yeah? And this is too fancy. They use applicant tracking software. You know, some of these companies use applicant tracking software. And because even though the CV is done in Microsoft Word, there's loads of color in it, there's loads of text boxes, it's simply not suitable. So I'm being 100% honest with you. But this CV is very useful if you, you know, this type of CV, I'm not saying it has to be this one, it could be, you know, anything like that, for example. Um, but something where you catch people's attention. Yeah, so let me again explain what I'm talking about. The reality is, is that these people are gonna be, um, are gonna have, you know, be sent a lot of stuff, yeah? You know, they're going to, you know, if you future boss, that's what I call them. They're going to be sent a lot of information. And so what you ultimately need to be thinking about is, you know, I need to recognize that if they've got a pile of CVs on my desk, I need to be making sure that my, you know, makes them like take a second look. And something like this makes people take a second look. And that's ultimately what you want to do. Because I think they say, statistically, that somebody might spend maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds looking at your CV to decide if they want to kind of look at it any further. So again, 
it needs to be good, it needs to be of value, and it needs to catch people's attention. So this is good. This type of CV is good if you're sending it direct to the hiring manager. It is no good, let me make it very clear, if you are sending this, for example, to a recruiter because they want to own CV, they want to change it. <laughs> they don't want to put your name and your contact details because the recruiter won't get their, uh, their, <laughs> their money from you, yeah, their commission if they, if they find you a job. So they're not going to do that. That's why this will not work, okay? But this is good if you're sending it direct to the hiring manager. And again, this is something that I do that's different from probably most of the career coaches is that I provide you with two CV templates. I recognize the black and white one, your standard one is still relevant, but I also recognize that you do need to get people's attention. So I do provide this as well. Now, I'm not going to go on about this too much, but um, actually anybody that, and I'll put this in an email when I send it out, this recording, but if anybody signs up, you get, I think it's six different CV templates, the 9.99, it, all of it goes to charity. I'm actually giving that completely away. And if somebody does actually buy it, I actually send you the receipt. I actually, I think it's Venezuela, um, there's, there's, there, it's starving zoo animals, that's where it's going. Don't ask me why I picked that, but I just did, okay. So anybody that buys that, that's ultimately I'll send you a receipt and you can see that, that what you spent, it's just all going to, it, to, to them. But ultimately, that's what you need to be thinking about. You need to have, if you're gonna send something direct to the hiring manager, in my opinion, you need to get people's attention and that looks the part. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. So let's carry on. I'm kind of wrote a couple of notes. <laughs> right, okay. So back in the day, back in the day, do you remember that maybe 20 years ago that when we did CVs, that we simply used to uh, get the newspaper out? <laughs> yeah, circle it. And then we would send our CV off for that particular job. Does anybody remember those days? Go on, be brave. Is Jill there? Jill, are you still there? <laughs> well, I'm sure some of you do. Okay, so one of the things that you need to be thinking about is, is, is basically what I'm trying to say is those days we were very much okay. Um, the ownership or the, the power was with the organization in some senses. And I'm actually saying to you, you can, you can take a lot of, um, you can be proactive. You can be proactive. You don't need to just wait until a job opportunity comes along. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a couple of strategies that you could employ to, um, to get past HR if you wanted to. So one strategy is if you see a job as being advertised and you like that job, then one opportunity that you could look at is, is basically work out your future boss, do some Google research, go and look at the company's website, go and look for them on LinkedIn, go and do some research, <laughs> yeah? Because ultimately you need to be working out, okay, if I wanna miss HR, then you ultimately need to be going straight to um, the, the, your future boss. And what you could be doing is, is creating maybe a hit list of people, okay? So they could be actual jobs that exist. And the other part could be that, you know, if a job did exist. So you've got two, two branches here. Yes, it is time consuming, I'm not gonna lie to you, but this could be a good way, a good strategy. But again, what, why I've been so keen to kind of stress that your CV needs to look the part is because the new CV that you've got, we're gonna use that CV and we're gonna actually use that CV to target your future boss. And uh, you're gonna also, you know, does everybody remember the traditional cover letter? Yeah, the cover letter that, you know, you send along with your CV and a cover letter is very simply, you know, we've seen your job advertised, you know, wherever on read, yeah. And so um, 
one of the things that you need to be thinking about is if, if that's the case, you know, that you, you know, you've got your traditional cover letter, then you can create what I call the show and tell letter. And it's simply a one page document that goes with this new CV. And it could be the creative CV template that you use. And the way that I suggest that you do this is that you set out the show and tell letter. Um, and again, I'm a very different type of career coach. You know, I'm kind of, I like to think that I'm proactive. Yeah, this is, this is what I've actually created. And so this show and tell letter that I've created, there's a framework that you can use. And the, and the framework is really clever. It's the, one of them, I call it the bait, <laughs> okay? The bait. So something, and I'll explain this in a second, I'm just gonna go through the four parts. The bait, problem identification, the, how you solve the problem, and the close. They're the, they're the four key parts of um, a really clever show and tell letter. And um, the bait section is kind of like um, talking about, you know, what is, is praising them in some sense, okay, the company or that person, yeah? So you've got to, I mean, let's be honest, how many times does somebody say to you, you've done a great job, yeah? People often think it, but not a lot of times do it actually verbally be said. So if you want to get people's attention and get them on board, a good way is to praise that person. And then the second part of it is, is thinking about the problems that they, they have. And, and the third part is how you solve those problems. And the close is really to do with a clear call to action. That's what I call it, a clear call to action. What is it that you would like this person to do after they've read this document and you've got your CV there? And the thing that you want them to do, by the way, if you don't know this, is you want them to pick up the phone and have a conversation with you. And that is a very proactive approach. And it's a very clever approach that you can kind of look at. So, so this is called the show and tell letter. And again, if I was doing your, your resume, your CV, this is something I give to every single client. There is like at least three examples in this, in this document. And I set it out step by step in terms of how you do it. But I also provide you the traditional cover letter. And I kind of call it fill in the blanks because I've wrote the cover letter. <laughs> and you just have to kind of like put in the, in the keywords that, you know, where the prompts, that's what I'm going to say. So these are clever. This is, this is a clever way that I would say that you could start looking at kind of missing out HR. You simply just, you just miss out the middleman and you go direct to your future boss. So has anybody done something like this in the past? I'm sure you have, but maybe. Yes, I have. Um, you know, I've reached out to a couple of firms recently that I've, you know, felt I wanted to work for and I've just sent a, a connection request or, an in, or sorry, the uh, LinkedIn in mail, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've gone to them directly, and actually, it's come back with some interesting responses. Actually, I mean, they've not necessarily led to a role, um, but then you made a connection in the company. Yeah, so if they hire someone in the future, you're already on their radar. So uh, yeah, which is good. Yeah, I look so, at it as a long-term um, benefit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and so I would say that you now need to be thinking this creatively because there's going to be, or there is, a lot of. You know, a lot of people that are going to be made unemployed or are made unemployed and you need to be getting people's attention. Yeah. The, the good news is, is that most CVs or resumes are not that great. Okay. I'm being very honest. They're not that great. So even if you just were able to increase, you know, you know, take it up a notch, you would ultimately start to stand out. Yeah, so this is the approach that I would say that you could be looking at and the framework that you could also look at with regards to the show and tell letter. Yeah, it's bait. What have they done 
that is like, wow, you know, that you can give them some kind of praise for. And then, you know, what it, you know, what you think that the problems that they could have, how you can solve those problems, and then a clear call to action of what you would like them to do next. Yeah. But it all comes back to that CV. Yeah. Too many people think that what they've actually got is good. And actually, it's just very generic. It just talks a good game. It's just fancy adjectives. Whereas if I was doing a CV, I really like to do a lot of storytelling. <laughs> I like to build the narrative of why you are ultimately the best solution to the problem that they've got. Any questions with what I've talked about? Anybody got any questions? No questions, Sue, but I've got to fly, so thanks so much. It's really useful advice. Take care. Not a problem. Lovely having you on the call, David. Thank you. Hopefully see you next week. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody got any questions that they would like me to answer? Oh, anybody got any particular, you know, issues at the moment with the job search or maybe they're looking for that you want me to give you some advice? So I'm more than happy to do that as well. Okay. So it's, yeah. um, it's Ian here. Um, I've been on the call, but I've not been able to see anything that you've been discussing, you know, with your creative CV. Oh, that's a shame. Right. Do me a favor. So I am sharing the screen. Can nobody see what I was talking about? Is anybody else not able to see? What I'll do is I'll stop sharing and definitely was sharing the screen. So let me share the screen again. Can you see this document now? No, no, I just... Okay, so what you need to do is close things down. Sometimes because um, you've got things on the screen that you need to just close whatever you've got until you get back to Zoom. Well, can anybody else speak to me? Can anybody else confirm that you can see my screen? It's quite a messy desktop. <laughs> yeah, we can see it, Susan. Right, okay, so, so that's fantastic. Okay, so um, what I will do, I'm just gonna, what I will do is I'll send out, if you still can't find it, I'm gonna send out all the links to what I've shown today anyway. Okay, so if you've got this message via email, if anybody wants to reach out direct to me, feel free. I knew there's a question there and I will reply to it in a second. Well, you can also just send in a message to my email, my personal email, which is Susan Burke, all one word, at live.co.uk. Um, right, okay, so Dominic's got a question. Right, okay, so, right, so let's talk about the, sorry, let's just talk about Daniel that made that point before, which I don't think I've, I've totally answered. What I really hate, by the way, is when people just stick a load of keywords in their profile because ultimately it will be read by a human. And then you're just looking at these keywords and you're going, okay. But I understand why you've put it there, yeah? Because you want to at least be found to be read by a human, right? But what I like to do, which is probably different from most, is I just identify the keywords and make sure that they are in the CV. And, it, and it's talk and, it, and it's story based rather than just having a massive keywords. Okay, so this keywords are useful, particularly if you're uploading it to a job site, um, you know, like Read or something like that, or maybe even you know a company website. Keywords are useful, but I don't like to see a big mass of keywords. It's kind of the same with LinkedIn profile. I hate that. You know, when you see okay, a load of keywords. I believe that you can get keywords in there naturally without just having to just spam the page. Okay, right. Yeah, okay, the difference between, can I just ask Dominic, what is it that you do career-wise? Because you're talking about, it includes research, grants, publications, etc. So what do you do? Ah, administration universe, right, okay, fantastic. Okay, so um, again, it would depend on the job that you're going for, yeah? It, it, so, again, it's a, it's a, you know, the way that I look at it, it's not about trying to include the kitchen sink, yeah? It's about working out, well, what is it they ultimately want to see, yeah? 
Um, and that's the way that I, I would look at it. So if we found that research grants and publications, which it could be, sounds like it definitely is, is going to be particularly useful, then yes, that would be included. Um, but I do like to re-engineer the process. I always like to go to your, uh, to look at a number of job descriptions and look at the, what are the common thing, co you know, the common theme that they seem to be asking for. Okay. Um, but another thing that you can also do is if you go to um, my website, which maybe would have been helpful if I had it up on the screen, but it's the LinkedIn Success Academy. And then um, one of the things that you know, people can, can also look at, slow loading, we will get there, is, is look at the success stories. Okay, so, you know, that is kind of a good way to look at it in terms of, you know, the different work that I've done for other people. And you can see, you know, different people here all around the world. Ken was from the US, just a message that he sent to me via LinkedIn, for example. Okay, you've got a six-figure job off LinkedIn or through my network, just got laid off. That's very sad, been in logistics, supply chain, or sales for the past 15 years. You, have you done, uh, done resumes at the senior level for this industry? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, you, again, I think that kind of, so, so, you know, Mark Daniel, just go and look at um, my success stories. It, to me, if I'm very honest with you, I'm very good. I, I, I'm going to be, I, I don't think it's industry-based or sector-based. What I'm very good at is I'm very good at being able to work out the ultimate reason why they want to employ you. So I'm able to figure out and just cut out the noise. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I also say to people, which is completely risk free. Yeah. Is if somebody does want to work with me is that I'm more than happy, um, you know, to put in an email that after our first conversation, Remember what I said, I don't just send you a questionnaire. We have a, you know, um, a real honest conversation about, I call it your USP. Your USP is, you know, the reason why is your unique selling point. It's, 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 it's why you ultimately get hired for those roles. We work that out and that, that helps us create your CV, to be honest with your resume. Um, and what I say to people is that if you're not happy with, our first conversation that we have together, I am more than happy to just give you a full refund as long as you let me know immediately after the call. Um, I, I'm, I can do that because you can see. I mean, this is um, another guy, he's actually in Dubai and um, he was talking about, okay, you've got, you know, if you if you read it, yeah, he's saying touching base, um, you know, I'm just, yeah, the, the big news, which I think is funny, he's put that in the second para paragraph, is uh, through LinkedIn, I got, I got hired against 2,640 applicants, would you believe it? So there's loads of different stories, um, even one yesterday that came in that I'm helping, um, you know, a copywriter, for example, again, a completely different career, um, and she's more freelancer-based, and um, she said, oh, the LinkedIn profile must be working because an insurance company, she works in the financial space, you see, has just got in touch with her to do a job. Okay. But the, I'll be honest with you, you know, I tend to only work with director level people only for one reason, because they're the only people that will pay me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Okay. I am not going to lie to you. Um, so you know, this is what I do day in, day out, okay? So feel free. So Mark, what I can offer is, um, if you wanna have a chat, it's complimentary, we can just have a one-to-one -one chat. If you're interested, we would just go from there. And that goes to anybody on this call as well. Okay, is there, is there anybody else that has got any questions? I know somebody's just joined us. Um, we're just about to finish. I do have another um, another um, webinar, live one, but it's more aimed at freelancers and consultants, like, I don't know, management, 
let's see, um, management consultants, non-executives, IT consultants, finance directors. It's more aimed at those people that are looking for, you know, um, they go in and out of companies. Um, so if anybody's interested in that session, it's probably going to be starting in about an hour, but you'll get an email of when the next session is going to be. You're more than welcome to join that call as well. So I'll be doing two on a Thursday, um, but just a different target market in some senses. So um, if anybody wants to have a conversation with me, um, particularly for job search, it's the, the session is called the breakthrough session to learn the one reason why you're not getting hired. And I know it's probably Corona, but we would look at, okay, creating, <laughs> you know, uh, you know a, a real building block or plan of what you need to be looking at. Any other questions? And if, Mark, you've got an email today from me, there's, there's actually a link in that email for you to book online for a free session, just so that you know. Any other questions? You're more than welcome to just speak out or stick it in the chat. It's entirely your choice. Well, thank you for your time. So, um, hopefully, if you've got any questions, Email me direct. You've got my email, susanburke at liveco.uk. Feel free. Otherwise, have a fantastic day. It's actually sunny here, so it's all good. Um, and hopefully, see you next week. Take care.